Good morning and welcome to another Tuesday tour. It's John Sauter along with April Holider behind the camera. And this morning we're coming to you from the ground floor in the Union Building because we want to talk about Purdue's Bowling Alley, these days known as the Union Rack and Roll. But it has really been here a long time and it really is a, a modern version of what it used to be. Very popular these days, but we thought we'd talk about the history of that and kind of show you what it looks like. But well, we are on the ground floor coming to you right outside Pappy Sweet Shop, established 1927. And just to put in perspective, here's the gro ground floor plan for the Union Building. And you can see originally, Pappy's was actually a little soda, fountain, soda, soda fountain place right here. And the billiards room was located right next to it. So billiards back, back then was very popular. And here's what the billiards room used to look like. So the billiards room was actually all the way through here, right across from the barber shop. So the barber shop was there until the early 70s or so, all in this area right around here. But as the union expanded uh, and they wanted to add bowling alleys, things got moved around and that's what we're really going to kind of talk about in, uh, in more detail as we work our way down the hallway towards the basement and the steps that go down. So we're basically on the east end uh, of the Union on the ground floor. These steps go out into the garage and so I think logistically you probably have an idea of where you are. So we go down the steps and if neither of us fall down the steps, you get an idea of the rack and roll in the basement of the Union building. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So we'll meet you down at the bottom of the steps. Okay, we made it down the steps. Now we're actually headed into the Union rack and roll um, area. It's noisy down here because we're going through the game section. They actually still have video games down here that the uh, students can come and play and they're used quite a bit. In fact, the most popular I understand is the, is the dance machine right here where you uh, have to put your foot on the correct light at the, same, at the right time and all that sort of thing. So it's really kind of an arcade feel to it uh, as a part of the Union rack and roll. So we'll make our way over to what is now the billiards room. And so let's go through just a little bit of history. Uh, as the Union Building opened, it had the billiards room, which we just pointed out upstairs. Uh, that was the most popular. But as they added on to the Union Building in 1936, they wanted to add uh, bowling alleys. So let's think about this just a minute. Uh, 1936, um, students are playing billiards, they're doing jigsaw puzzles. Uh, there's not a whole lot of recreation going on, certainly co-ed. But bowling was starting to emerge, and so again, the planners, R.B. Stewart, Lloyd Vallely, and others had the foresight to see the popularity of bowling starting to arrive. 1936, uh, the addition was put on the Union, and we had bowling alleys, perhaps the first in the Lafayette area uh, to actually be here. Kept the students on campus, kept the students occupied down here. Uh, became very popular, but again, 1936, Amelia Earhart visiting here uh, once in a while. Uh, enrollments in the few thousands or so. Uh, it's kind of an interesting time on campus. Originally the bowling alley had 14 uh, lanes. They had 10, 10 over there, 4 over here. Uh, the billiards room was actually upstairs. Eventually it was moved over in between Stewart Center and the Union Building. Uh, they had over 20 tables, 22 tables I believe in there as they expanded the billiards room because they wanted to expand a sweet shop upstairs. So there was kind of a domino effect that took place. Well, in the early 2000s or so, uh, they needed that space over there for the Envision Center. Billiards was not quite as popular, so they gave up four lanes here. We now have 10 and we have 12 billiards tables. Still quite popular. In fact, there still is a billiards club that competes um, with other billiards clubs, usually located through our union building, the ACUI activities, the College Union Association, uh, has, has competition. Uh, still quite popular with students. Uh, in fact, on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights down here, they tell me this place is hopping till about midnight with all the tables occupied, the dance machine, the video games, uh, and the bowling alley part of it. So now we're going to go look at the bowling alley part as we make our way past the air hockey game and a variety of things available. In fact, there's a class that's taking place right now. Maybe some of you actually had bowling class. Well, I can tell you it still happens. Monday through Friday, there's a bowling class uh, that's available. 
Nope. I'll get you to go this way and I'll get over here. You can kind of see what's happening with the bowling class behind me. But in addition to the bowling class, they have recreational bowling, so you can bring your families here. Uh, they have uh, a lot of birthday parties take place here. April, have you ever been here with the family? Oh yeah. All right. It's a good winter activity. Great winter activity. Um, and you can rent lanes. You can actually rent the entire place if you want to have a reunion or something like here. It's just a great venue for that. Uh, I have to mention, Terry Clayton, who retired recently from the Union, uh, this was his heart and soul. He was quite a bowler himself with over 20, 300 games, but he really poured himself into keeping this facility um, in the Union for one thing. Uh, it becomes a viable, it's a profit center. They actually make money here um, by having all the offerings. And now they have these days something called extreme bowling. And so they have black lights on and they have music videos playing with the DJ. You can bring in, again, the younger families, the younger bowlers. They actually have bumpers that you can put up in all the lanes or individual lanes or individual bowlers. They're automatically going up and down depending what you want. They actually have a little ramp you can put the ball on and roll it for those who can actually lift the six pound or the eight pound ball, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, so it's really something for all of the family to be able to do. Purdue is so fortunate to have it. Uh, one of the clubs operating out of the bowling alley is the Purdue Intercollegiate Bowling Club. A very competitive club that's been going on for years and years again, competing with all the other bowling clubs through ACUI, through other union building activities. And we've done, we've won some national championships, as a matter of fact, with our bowling club here. So uh, somewhat unusual to have uh, a bowling alley within a union building, but it's been going on for years. Again, as bowling became very popular as it was probably from the 40s all the way up through the 80s or so, um, I can remember my dad having his bowling shirt because of the league that he belonged to. Um, and for you history folks, I can say that Harry Truman in 1947 had bowling alleys added to the White House. So there really is some history connected to bowling. Uh, in fact, league bowling here used to be very popular. Um, every night of the week, they had uh, bowling taking place uh, down here. Uh, the class is going on, so we're going to have to quiet down just a little bit. Uh, this fellow's been teaching for about 30 years or so, um, dedicated to that. But we did want to give you a glimpse of the bowling alley, the union rack and roll, and all the things that are available. Something else to come back and see when you're on campus. Uh, in closing, I have to tell you this is our 59th video. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm a little sad to say this is going to be April's last. We're saying farewell to April as she's accepted a position over in the, in the College of Health and Human Sciences. And she's been instrumental, she's been so helpful to me. She is a production team for me when it comes to recording and directing and suggestions and all those things. And so we're really gonna miss uh, April, but we'll be moving forward and we'll have show number 60 here in a few weeks. So uh, April, say goodbye to folks. <laughs> Thank we're, you. We're gonna miss you. And with that, uh, let me close with Dale Purdue.